researchers have proven so far that like 20 to 30 percent of Nigerians, yeah, have mental health issues. So if we do do the math, 20 percent of um, um, 200 million, that is 40 million. Mm -hmm. So if it's 20 to 30 percent, that mm -hmm. is 40 million to 60 million. Yeah. So, so yeah, so that's within the range. Yep. Goodness, that's a significant number. Yes, <laughs> that's yes. a significant incidence of yes. uh, mental illness in Nigeria. Yes, yes. and I, I guess this shouldn't shock anyone because um, I don't know if if people are shocked. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's because they have a. I'm looking for a nice way to say this. They, they, they uh, have, they a have very a narrow understanding, yes, yes, of what yes. mental illness looks like. Because I'm sure there are a lot of people who think, "Oh, do you mean that 40 million people, Nigerians are mad?" Mm. <laughs> so, could you explain to Lagos how we define mental illness? Okay. What does it encompass? Okay. So let me start with the definition of mental. Mental first. Mental does not mean madness. And I always say this where, wherever I go to. Hmm. Um, because when Nigerians hear mental, the first thing that comes to their mind is madness. Mental is a technical term for mind. Just like when we say cardiac. Cardiac means the heart. Mm -hmm. When we say osteo, it means the bones. Mm -hmm. uh, when we say ophthalmology, it means you are referring to the eyes. Mm -hmm. So we have different medical terms. Mm -hmm. When we say renal, we are referring to the kidneys. So mm -hmm. when you hear mental, we're referring to the mind. So when we say mental health, it means the health of the mind, the mm -hmm. mi mind health. Mm -hmm. So the next question is, where is the mind? Mm -hmm. The mind is situated in the brain, within the brain, mm -hmm. you know. So and, and your brain is a biological organ that is resident in your skull, inside your head. Mm. So that means your mind is from a biological organ. So that means your your thoughts, your emotions, your behavior are regulated by a biological organ mm. as against spiritual things. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you stress that. Yes. As against <laughs> spiritual things. It's, it sounds like that's something you deal with quite yes, a bit in yes, your line of work. Yes, deal with that misconception a lot. And you know, it's because, you know, when we talk about the functionalities of the mind, it is n it is not palpable. Like, okay, if I, if I tell you about heart beats and I put a stethoscope to your ears, you can, you can actually it. hear, yeah. Mm -hmm. But can I hear your thoughts? No. You know, it, it's very, very um, abstract. Mm -hmm. So we deal with a lot of abstract things mm -hmm. when it comes to mental health. Mm -hmm. So because of that, you know, a lot of times people don't understand. And in fact, some people even think their minds <laughs> is in their chest. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then, you know, the symbol of love is the heart mm -hmm. and so some people think that oh, your emotions and oh you know your your uh, when you when you're happy when you're sad everything is mm. coming from the chest mm. no it's not coming from there mm. you know it used to it used to be thought you know in i mean back 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 um when when um the knowledge about medical science was still infantry mm -hmm. and it was thought that because the heart pumps blood mm -hmm. around the body so it must be the one that pumps warmth and emotions around the body and mm. then you know when you are in love mm -hmm. You feel this warmth and you know you feel this physical sensation. Mm -hmm. So at that time, it was it was thought that it was the, the heart, yeah, doing so that. that you love with your heart. Mm -hmm. So yes, you love with your heart, but this heart is in, in the, the brain. brain. Yes, you, you so, love with your heart's brain, yes. your brain's heart. Yes. Is there a way to enable early detection yes. of mental illness? Yes. Yes. What's the way? Every every illness starts small. I mean, you rarely see. Although there are some aggressive, there are some, some aggressive conditions. Maybe some some aggressive something cancers, traumatic, yes, uh, something you know, triggering. Things, yes, you know. But by and large, most most illnesses will start, you know, from a small place, and a lot of times people just dismiss it or they don't understand. So when we talk about early early signs mm. or early symptoms of mental health conditions, mm. we talk about common things that people might just dismiss as something else. Okay. It might be changes in your sleep pattern. Changes in your appetite, yes. Mm. Changes um, with your mood when you have drastic mood changes, mm. or you cannot, you know, you, you, your mood is controlling you, mm. or your mood is crippling your activity, or you are not relating well like you used to, or you are not productive. Mm. You are, you, you know that you you are not delivering, even though you are going to work, but you are not delivering. You are not you are you are not hundred percent. So this could be early early symptoms or, or, or of uh, mental disorders. It could also be things like forgetfulness. You know, not being able to concentrate. You are doing something and your mind is wandering here and there. Um, it, it could also include things like mood abnormalities like you are irritable people have to walk on eggshells around you people don't know what is going to make you angry little things trivial things 
would make you angry. Maybe at home, you are just irritable. Mommy is irritable, or daddy is irritable. You know, and and then uh, and then it's, it can also manifest as physical symptoms. That's right. Uh, when you start having headaches, that you are always treating. Um, um, with Panadol or, or um, anti-malaria, or you're always treating malaria every every month, every or you have unrelenting back pains. You take a lot of painkillers and it's not going, mm. or you have stomach pain. You uh, you have you know you have maybe some symptoms that you go for all the tests in this world and, and there's not really anything. nothing. You mm. so it could be um, symptoms of a mental health condition. You no, know, a lot of people talk about therapy. I'm going for therapy. I'm going for therapy. And, and so the question is, what is therapy? And who are these therapists? A lot of people brand themselves as therapists. But let me just tell, um, um, educate Nigerians a bit. You know, we have different mental health professionals. It's not only the doctors that work there. And in all fields of health, it's not only the doctors that do the work. We have other um, professionals. So in the mental health field, we have the psychiatrist. The psychiatrist is the one that leads the team. That mm. The psychiatrist is a medical person, is a medical doctor. You know, the psychiatrist first went to medical school, you know, has a medical degree, and then went further to specialize in mental health mm. just just as is um, a cardiologist who is a medical doctor who now went at um, i had to specialize in cardiac matters mm -hmm. you know and um, then we have the psychologist psychologists learn i mean about the the functioning of the mind you know the scientific um, study of the mind and behavior so they understand how the mind works so psychologists we work with them um, um psychologists help also you know to bring out the best in you mm. they can help with some forms of mental health conditions that are not serious mm -hmm. uh, they cannot prescribe psychiatrists can prescribe because they are not doctors and then and then it's only psychiatrists well let me I, I don't want to say only but let me put it this way psychiatrists are trained to diagnose and I and I give you a good example because you know here in Nigeria a lot of because mental health is a commodity that everybody needs mm. you know and we have a shortage of mental health personnel so a lot of people cash in on this vacuum mm. and they call themselves therapists you know so people must really really know the difference see if you have any health condition that's why it is called health mm. if you have any health condition go to a doctor first you, you don't have to come to me you don't have to go to a psychiatrist go to your primary care physician i mean i mean when i say primary care physician your general you know doctor to, to somebody that you can just walk up to mm -hmm. i cannot sleep but just go there first why because there are some mental health symptoms that might that 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 might look like oh maybe you have yes might, you have a mental health condition it might not be for example there are there are some other conditions that might masquerade as depressive symptoms yes mm. so for example if you are anemic you mm. can have symptoms of depression if mm. you have hypothyroidism you can have symptoms of depression what's hypothyroidism hypothyroidism is when your thyroid gland is not functioning well okay. it's functioning suboptimally okay yeah and then if you have the opposite if you have hyperthyroidism it can manifest as anxiety Hmm. Yes. Then if you have things like maybe Parkinson's disease, that is a disease in, of the nervous system, mm -hmm. it can it can manifest as depression. If you have things like uh, multiple sclerosis, multiple sclerosis is when the covering of the nerves is affected. The, 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 the nerve cells, the nerve cells make up the central nervous system. Mm -hmm. So the, and the, the, the linings are, um, are fatty. Okay. So when the immune system fights against this lining, it's called multiple sclerosis. So it can manifest as depression even vitamin d deficiency can mm. manifest as depressive symptoms oh my god yes yes so we see what, what, I'm, what i'm saying this is is of course i can't treat everybody mm -hmm. the psychiatrist cannot treat everybody but mm -hmm. when you have any health condition it's good for you to go to the doctor the doctor examines you mm. and then narrows down and then if you need just psychotherapy the doctor would refer you to a psychologist mm -hmm. it's better that way mm. but you know because nigerians would want to say that oh, i'm not mad therefore i'm not going to see a psychiatrist or more my, my problem Problem is not so severe. It's only that oh, I'm not sleeping well. Mm. Yes, if you if you feel that your problem is minor, yes, you can go to a psychologist. Mm -hmm. it's a, 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 a psychologist that that is um, genuine, a, a psychologist that knows his onions would direct you if he feels that this one is beyond me. Mm. And meanwhile, we have different types of psychologists too. We have clinical psychologists, we have educational psychologists, mm. um, occupational psychologists, industrial psychologists, sports psychologists. So mm -hmm. we have them differently. So you mm -hmm. cannot say well because you are not sleeping. 
people and then you go to a sport psychologist. Mm-hmm. Generally, psychologists help you to, they, 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 they facilitate you to, to be able to enjoy life, to enjoy your mental health well. So psychologists can can teach you things like stress management, mm-hmm. you know, cognitive help you. behavior. Yes, yes. And then, and then they identify some factors can, that can also make you vulnerable mm. to developing illnesses, maybe like the way you think which um, w- w- when they use cognitive therapy mm-hmm. so cognitive therapy is just like changing the basic way that you think mm-hmm. you know so they can do things like that and then we also have um social workers social workers are also mental health workers they help to see that the person's basic needs are met like mm-hmm. you know the person has a house to stay mm-hmm. the workplace is good he, the person is not being discriminated against mm-hmm. the, the, the person is not being bullied in school mm-hmm. you know, things like that, that. Sort of yes the person has a job the person Person has um, food to eat, things like that. Mm-hmm. You, you, you know your social needs. Mm-hmm. And then we have counselors. Counselors, they, they just deal with problems, you know, challenges. Uh, they, they don't go into the core person. Okay. They just use the available resources. For example, maybe you have um, challenges, maybe we, in your marriage now, you can go to a marriage counselor, mm-hmm. you know. But if, 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 a, if a psychologist was going to um, um, help you with that, the psychologist will go into deeper, deeper, deeper issues, like maybe how you are thinking, the way you think, or the way you handle things, how it is affecting that relationship. But the counselor will not do that. The counselor would who is not bothered about how you think or whatever. A counselor would just know. Oh, this these are the things that you can do, and just a, a, a counselor is more superficial mm. than 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 a psychologist. We also have occupational therapies. Occupational therapies help us to live independently. Mm. You know, so occupational therapies works with all age groups. Occupational therapies might help. You know, teaching people how to do their chores, how to how to um, plan. You know how to organize things. Maybe some people are very, very poor with uh, their executive functioning. Mm-hmm. You know, so they, they they delay in delivering tasks because they they don't plan. They cannot organize their time. Mm. You know, they cannot do all those things. And then sometimes too, maybe a, a child is not writing well. The occupational mm-hmm. therapist can help that child to 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 be able to grasp the pen well. Mm. So they help in such things. You know, and it could even be as teaching teaching a child how to bathe. Mm. You know, yes, or how to. Dress and we have all of these professionals yes, in Nigeria. Yes, we, we do. We do. Yes. You know, there's something that uh, Dr. Obindo said, um, or he claimed, that um, only 10% of the mentally ill can currently access care. Yeah. Do you agree? Oh, well, yes, you agree. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Why for is that? Various, for various reasons. Mm-hmm. Chief of them is ignorance. Mm. Some people who are mentally ill don't even know it is mental illness. And then... For some that know it is mental illness, they don't want to come for treatment because it means that to them, it means accepting that they are mad. Hmm. So it means that they are going to be stigmatized. So they feel that going to the psychiatric hospital would come with a lot of stigmatization. So they would rather, you know, go to other places like maybe praying, hoping that prayer would take it away. Mm-hmm. So. Um, and then the third reason is, you know, some people don't have the money mm-hmm. because coming to a psychiatric hospital is, I mean, you have to spend money. Mm-hmm. But the chief reasons, the chief reasons, ignorance and stigmatization, you know, people fear it a lot. Mm. Yeah. <laughs>